right, everybody, we're going to talk about Hodgkin's lymphoma here. Now, if you haven't watched my video on non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, I would suggest going back to that because I'm going to kind of just gloss over some of the similarities. Um, if you understand non-Hodgkin's, you'll have a really good leg up on Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, so please watch that video first um, and then come to this one. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you very much who have already donated. And definitely subscribe to my channel. You'll get notifications as I put more videos up, which I try to do three to five times a week at least. All right, let's start with a vignette. We've got a 24 year old woman. Uh, presenting to the clinic complaining of cough and fatigue for the last two months. She was last she was seen last month and diagnosed with an upper respiratory tract infection, but it has not uh, resolved. She's physically active. She doesn't smoke or do drugs. There's no significant past medical history. She takes levonorgestrel ethanol estradiol for birth control, pretty common birth control drug. She's sexually active and uses protection occasionally. Vitals are within normal limits. She's lost 15 pounds since her last or since her visit six months ago, and she had lost 10 pounds between that visit and her previous visit. So she's lost five pounds in the last month. Uh, physical exam, non-tender cervical lymphadenopathy. Lungs are cleared to auscultation. Everything else is pretty much normal. Okay, so what stands out? So she's got the cough, but she's got a fatigue, she's lost weight, and she's got lymphadenopathy. When you see those three things, you should be thinking of lymphoma, okay? If it was just the fatigue and the weight loss, you might think of other cancers, but one of these lymphomas, NHL or Hodgkin's, is more common in young people. So our differential is Hodgkin's, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, simply because that's more common than Hodgkin's. Acute HIV syndrome, she has unprotected sex. Hyperthyroidism, she's a young woman. That's the classic uh, patient that could have, you know, Graves' disease or something. She's got the weight loss. She's got, uh, did she have night sweats? No, she's, uh, she's got weight loss. That's about it. Uh, but, you know, that could be a presenting feature. Uh, sarcoidosis, um, we'll, uh, we'll see again here um, that that is a, uh, a, a possibility, um, especially uh, with, with the fatigue and it's a young woman. Uh, and then tuberculosis, um, you know, unexplained cough, uh, you have to consider that. Okay, so just an overview of Hodgkin's. Uh, lymphoma is a malignant proliferation of lymphocytes. It's basically leukemia in a lymph node. It's a much less dramatic presentation, though, compared to the acute leukemias. Hodgkin's lymphoma is a specific form that's characterized on biopsy by the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells. There's not much difference between Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's, other than Hodgkin's can present in the mediastinum. Non-Hodgkin's usually doesn't do that. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, pretty much everything else that doesn't fit Hodgkin's, aka no Reed-Sternberg cells. So really, it's a pathologic differential. The stereotypic symptoms include painless lymphadenopathy and constitutional symptoms. You should know these B symptoms are going to be really important here. They're important in NHL, but they're even more important in Hodgkin's. Um, now, there is a bimodal distribution of Hodgkin's, so early adulthood, 20s, and then elderly people, 60s, 70s, 80s. The best initial step in the diagnosis of any lymphoma that includes Hodgkin's and NHL is an excisional lymph node biopsy. You can also do a core biopsy, but do not do an aspiration biopsy. Risk factors, age 20 to 34 and older than 55. So that bimodal distribution. History of an Epstein-Barr virus infection. Okay. So most people, I don't know if it's most, but a lot of people have had an Epstein-Barr virus infection. Okay, in which way do, can you get an Epstein-Barr virus infection that's common? Mono, lots of people get that, the kissing disease. And then a first degree relative with a history of Hodgkin's. So if it's a sister or a brother or a parent, um, the relative risk is threefold. That's, that's significant. If it's a dizygotic twin, then it's a seven, uh, times relative risk. And if it's an identical twin, it's a hundred times, a hundred times. 
Okay, so with our vignette, we're gonna do the excisional lymph node biopsy because she's got a painless lymph node. We're gonna get a chest X-ray. Why? Because she's got a cough. We'll get our routine lab, CBC, BMP. She's had weight loss, so we're gonna get thyroid function tests. She has got swollen lymph nodes and um, you know the those sort of constitutional signs, and she doesn't use protection regularly. So we do want to check for HIV. Um, it can cause an acute syndrome, um, so we want to keep an eye out for that. And then she's got a cough, so and weight loss, so we want to get a tuberculin skin test. Those two are really easy to get. So you know it's never a bad thing to cover all your bases. And what we see with the biopsy is the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells. Now, there are multiple types of Hodgkin's lymphoma. You will be responsible for them on step one. Step two and three, not really. Chest x-ray shows a mediastinal mass. That is common in Hodgkin's lymphoma, and that's what explains the cough. All right. This is a Reed-Sternberg cell. I'm sure you remember this from step one. It's that owl eye appearance. We've got two nuclei right next to each other. This one happens to have three. That can happen too, uh, but classically it's that owl's eye appearance. And here you can see another one. Can you find it? It's like playing Where's Waldo right there. It's right in the middle. So know what that looks like. All right, now there are, like I said, other possibilities, uh, any disease that can cause lymph node swelling. However, keep in mind that an infectious process usually causes a painful lymphadenopathy. We talked about acute HIV syndrome, pretty similar presentation, especially in a young person uh, who's not using protection, and other solid tumors. Spread to the lymph nodes and other tumors, like a breast cancer can cause an axillary lymphadenopathy. It's painless, um, so you would want to consider that. Um, just look at their other symptoms, their presentation should clue you in. You've got an old guy with painless lymphadenopathy and he's a long-term smoker and he's got a cough similar to this patient, you would want to check for lung cancer. Like I said, multiple subtypes only tested on step one. You know, you would think step one's uh, the last test you should have to take. And if, you know, some of you guys are outside the U.S., you uh, might not know, but step one is taken after your second year. Step two and three is taken later. Step one is traditionally the hardest test, but it's taken first. So baptism by fire. After the diagnosis of Hodgkin's, very similar to NHL, next step is to stage. So we get a PET scan and a bone marrow biopsy. And it's the same Ann Arbor scheme as NHL. So stage one is uh, one lymph node group. Stage two is two lymph node groups or more uh, on the same side of the abdomen. Actually, I don't know why I put that. Diaphragm. I made that mistake twice. Diaphragm. Although the diaphragm is in the abdomen. <laughs> okay, stage three is on both sides of the diaphragm. And stage four is basically metastatic disease. It's in the lungs. It's in the liver. That's where you get the PET scan. Now... Hodgkin's lymphoma tends to present here, stage one or stage two. That is nice. It makes survival better. Whereas NHL, um, 80 to 90% of patients will present in stage three or four. Now, it's very important that you know whether or not there are B symptoms present because that's going to impact treatment. So when you are writing the stage, uh, it's one, two, three, or four. We talked about that. And then if it is, if there are B symptoms present, then we would add the B on the end of it. So if somebody has stage three B Hodgkin's lymphoma, then um, what that's telling you is that's on both sides of the diaphragm and um, they're having B symptoms. So with our vignette, uh, we got the presence of Reed Sternberg cells. That's Hodgkin's lymphoma. The mediastinal mass is present, not unusual. Our next step is the whole body PET and the bone marrow biopsy. And the whole body PET showed cervical and inguinal lymphadenopathy, which we didn't appreciate on our exam. That's why we do the PET. Um, so what does she have? Stage one, two, three, or four? Three B both sides of the diaphragm, and she's got B symptoms. Bone marrow biopsy was normal. So like I said in the NHL section, fine needle aspiration is always the wrong answer for lymphoma. All right, now stage one and two, um, they get uh, radiation therapy. They may get low dose chemo, um, but uh, for step one and, or sorry, for stage one and two, just know it's pretty much just radiation. Now, stage three or four, 
or if they have any stage and they've got B symptoms, then it is chemo. And the standard regimen is ABVD. Now in NHL, it's CHOP or RCHOP. With Hodgkin's, it is ABVD. What does that stand for? A for adriamycin. It's an anthracycline, causes dilated cardiomyopathy just like the rest of them. Uh, bleomycin, despite its name, is different. Uh, this causes pulmonary fibrosis. Remember, bleomycin, blow, like your lungs. Vincristine causes peripheral neuropathy. It's a vinca alkaloid. And decarbazine um, can cause myelosuppression, although a lot of the chemotherapeutics can cause myelosuppression. Remember, what we're doing is we're preventing the division of cells. So it's going to affect um, your hematopoiesis. Adverse prognosticating factors, advanced age, higher stage, obviously, elevated SED rate, presence of B symptoms. The five-year survival. Now, I did this lecture 10 years ago. I'm just looking at my uh, data here. Uh, I created my original lecture on October 17th, 2013. So this is almost 10-year-old information. I kept the five-year survival rate from that lecture just to see if maybe there's been some changes. Um, and indeed, there has been. So there's better survival now for stage three and four. So this is a very survivable cancer uh, because it tends to present earlier, but even stage three and four tends to be uh, better. Now, I think one of the reasons that this has a better survival than uh, non-Hodgkin's is that it tends to present in younger people. Um, so uh, those patients usually respond better uh, to chemotherapy. They're less likely to have adverse reactions. So with our vignette, we uh, consult Heme-Onc. These are the drugs. Uh, bear in mind, you probably won't be asked about the drugs. However, a multiple choice question may tell you, okay, you got a patient with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, they were started on chemo. Which of the following is um, a, which of the following is not an adverse uh, reaction uh, to their chemo? So it's kind of a second degree question. I could see that coming up, but do know that you do have to know the chemo regimen for Hodgkin's. And that stands in contrast to a lot of the other cancers where they don't really test you on that. We consult surgery. A lot of times we'll just excise these nodes. Uh, consult radiation oncology, uh, although this would be more for stage one and two. Um, so on this particular patient, you probably wouldn't order that, but do know that in many Hodgkin's patients, you would. Cancer diagnosis counseling and reassure the patient. So to recap, Hodgkin's lymphoma is a malignant proliferation of lymphocytes that collect in the lymphatic system. Uh, all the lymphomas present pretty similarly, but Hodgkin's is distinguished from NHL based on the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells on biopsy. So it's really the only way to differentiate it. The one little thing, Hodgkin's lymphoma can uh, be mediastinal, so it may cause a cough, but you can't really rely on that. Uh, lymphoma should be suspected in anyone with painless lymph node, and the initial diagnostic test is an excisional lymph node biopsy. The diagnosis is based on pathology. After diagnosis, get a PET scan and bone marrow biopsy for staging, and the treatment is ABVD, adriamycin, bleomycin, vincristine, and decarbazine. This is a chemo regimen that is tested, so know it and know the side effects. And then this is uh, just kind of a recap of Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's comparison.